Hello, welcome back. Um, we are going to do a Christmas stocking. It's never too early to do Christmas stockings. These are for decoration, but you can use them if you wish. This is my template. And um, if you go to uh, www.thingsforboys.com, then you'll find this one. It's a few bits. Look everywhere. They're everywhere on the internet. It works. There you go. And that's a Christmas stocking. Now, I've already done two. Um, two fronts, and I've done them exactly the same. And as you can see, there we go. So those two I've done so far. So now we're going to, so what we want to do now is the opposite sides to them, so we can fit them together. We haven't done the lining yet. We need to do the lining separately. So what you need to do is, so the first one, which I did these, as you can see, See, it was facing the back a bit, then I can show you. As you can see, it was facing uh, that way. Um, so if you wanted to do two the same way, then obviously you face this way. Because now I want to do the opposite side, then you have to turn the foot round and then do it on this side. So I've got right side, right side, put right sides together and then you can see that they actually fit when you sew them together. So basically, you have to treat them, you have to do two opposites to get a full stocking. So what we'll do is angle them slightly and we'll sew directly onto the fleece. Now if you haven't got fleece, felt will do. Or uh, this is um, quilt backing, but you can use fleece or felt, whichever. Or if you haven't got either, then just um, uh, double up some material uh, so it's a little bit thicker than normal. Um, what you do is put one up facing up, and obviously to, to do it, you have to put them fa um, right sides together, so then turn them and press. So it goes like that. Then obviously you can do it from this side as well, so it'll be right sides together. So turn and press. Now it doesn't matter what shape you do them. You can do at an, you can do angles. You can sew at an angle. You can do one way this way, one way that way. You do whatever pattern you wish to do. But what I'm doing is I've done d both of the others exactly the same and every time I cut one for this I should put it with the next one to do that one the same so this is fatigue so it doesn't go right or wrong uh, basically I shall secure um, backtrack front and, front and end doing whatever order you wish, you can go, go all the way to the top, finger press until you get to your iron. I'm just going to show you by doing the other side. Uh, I've pressed this fabric already, but when you put it on, make sure that when you turn over, it is going to cover what you wish it to cover. Do you see where it's sort of like missing that bit? So I need to bring it over, and then obviously now I know, so I'm going to take it over as far as I can get it. I've probably angled this slightly different to the other one. As long as you can see that it's going to cover once you've turned it over. So. You can just keep doing that all the way down. I'm going to iron each one as I go along. I've got some more petite. This one's red this time. And again, right sides together. Just 
down just so you can have a look at that. And for some reason it's not cutting underneath. And then do the same. This is directional fabric, so if I go right sides together that way and down, that's not going to be right. So I need to do that way to make it directional. Now, because I'm the angle I've got, and I want to make sure it's going to fit, so I turn it over. Yes, it is. So it's going to be facing the right way as a directional. There. Uh, Father Christmas is with the head chopped off. got when you've finished, which looks a bit like patchwork, obviously it's actually on the um, backing fabric of the, the fleece that the one of you used, and then you want it to look obviously like that. Uh, so what you're doing now is cut round the fleece, make sure not to cut your fleece because that is your shape, and then obviously you then you've got one going one way, and one going another. So then you put right sides together, the feet are facing in the right direction. So we'll do that next. We'll put the side of this one up by putting it to show. There you go. Both put now in the shape that they should be. Just put the other one out, put that on that side. Put that on that side. There you go. So then you do right side together. And a quarter of an inch all the way around. Not the top, the top so I've changed my foot, so make sure I only have a quarter of an inch all the way around. So you've done the uh, stockings right side together. I shall increase my stitch length because it's thick to three. That's better. Clipped it together instead of pinned. I think that's more secure. Follow the edge. When you get to your, when you go up turn the corners, obviously slow down a bit. out just so you can check that you've caught all the seams and then obviously then you need to put it back so we can do some clipping. And don't forget to go back. There you go. When you start and when you finish. There you go. So just need to double check it. Just move you over here. Get this round so I can see and lift you up. There you go, so just need to pull it out. You can do whatever side you want. Mine's going to just be used as wall decoration. Um, that's why I'm not really, but it is already quilted because of the way I put it together. But you can do more. You can do decorative stitches. So, what you do, you can do what you wish. If you want to use them, it's entirely up to you. If you want both the same each side, it's entirely up to you. Anyway, that's one done. And the idea is, I've actually got some white felt. If I've got enough, the idea is to try and put some white felt around the edges, around the tops. Obviously, I'll have to see if I've got enough to do all the way around on two pair. Anyway, that's what we've got so far. 
So there you go, I've done both of mine now. Turn them around the other way. There you go. It's the same that side and the same that side. What you do then, when you when you turn them together, turn them the right way out so you can just check everything okay been sewn in course. Put them back then uh, the other um, wrong side out. Uh, cut your seam allowance uh, to the same length, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, and then clip all in the curves. Then when you pull it through again and then press it, it actually lays a lot slow, uh, uh, a lot better. There you go. So far, so good. That's what we've done so far. And then when I work out how to get the um, the white felt across the top, then I'll come back. Well, I've worked it out. There's the finished article. There, just there. And I managed to get there on with the loop. The only colour I've got basically is back black. Um, I need to catch that by hand. But now I'm going to do the other one just to show you how I did this with that. There you are. Right, my felt is just over 9 inches wide, so what I did was, I cut two, because I had to join them, at 4 and a half. Well, I can get this right, that is. So, where's it going there? Right, so there I cut that at 4 and a half. Then I'll cut the other half, and there's only a little tiny bit left over. There's one four and a half. And there's the other four and a half. And then you have to join them together. Um quarter of an inch. Obviously it doesn't matter which side. Let's see if you can see the machine. flat, the felt flat on the uh, seam. Um, then fold your joined up felt and then press it to give it a fold. Then have about four inches of whichever ribbon and put it on the back. So obviously that's the front seam, so this back seam in the middle, upside down, just let it stick out at the top of it, just put a clip in just for now, just to keep it there. So you're going to put that one in first, then uh, you're going to get the end, and you want the raw edge, not the folded edge, and then you're going to go sure it's all level. Might take a couple of times. Just slightly over. Your Peter or your ribbon should be in the middle. Uh, it doesn't hurt that's going over slightly. Just securing that bit. And this is where you want to start. I wouldn't bother uh, doing putting clips all the way around. What because you've got to take there is you can't Unless you've got a really narrow, you, you're not going to get this in. You're just going to push it out of the way and get it underneath. And you just want to clip that just so while while you get it underneath. What you won't don't want to do is remove your ribbon from that centre. And if you can, get that underneath and get that underneath. 
and then get that and this can go over the seam with the ribbon you want in the centre secure it with your needle down as well you make sure everything's out of the way make sure your fabric underneath is actually at the top and not folded under Put your, I've got my stitch on 3.5 Felt isn't that thick, so you shouldn't have any problem because I've increased the uh, stitch size. And then a quarter of an inch. Uh, make sure that your raw edges are all together and that tucked out of the way. Make sure that when you stop and start that your needle is down so it doesn't move and your fabric's all together. Seam, just yeah, your front seam, just push it out to one side. Don't forget, we haven't lined this, it's not for use. It would not to be use it without lining actually. So, it depends who you're making it for. If you're making it to sell, then uh, you need to line it. fabric is to the top and it's not tucked under. All your raw edges are together level. I'm not going to rush it so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And obviously there's too much of this. Oh the bobbin threads are running out again. Let's hope I can get to the end. I haven't got a lot to do. The intro visit stops and starts but you'll see. Should have another little bit in. Get to the end. Make sure it's level with your other white, your other felt. make sure you cut it off with a little bit you can always cut it off again what you don't want to do is cut, not cut enough off right then what you do is trim trim your seam because if you've left your ribbon poking up you need to trim that level as well but trim it down to about an eighth of an inch Or a quarter in scant quarter. What would be your easiest way? Right, then you need to pull it on the floor. You need to pull it through. what it should look like. It's all pulled up, all at the top, everything's turned through. Then you need to turn it over and then that's when this comes out. Put your hands in, level it off. Then you need to make sure that you push this up so it's at least up and you've got a lip of about a quarter of an inch all the way around. in there all the way around it's that the white is sticking up so you don't see anything of this cream from the other side make sure it's turned up at least a quarter of an inch and then start at the back 
hooks up. Oh, I need popping. So, come back in a bit. So we're back again with a new bobbin. I've made sure it's all turned up about a quarter, quarter of an inch. And I've uh, got 3.5 because it's really thick now. started past this but this is the hardest bit that went that last time that I had to get a quarter of an inch on because it didn't want to go up make sure that it comes down level both go under the water. It's a bit thick so you might have to help it through. Join your um, lines back to up and then secure it with the back, back thread and then put your threads off. And there you go. Now, again, you're going to have to hand stitch that back. You have to push that up and unstitch that together there just to keep that down but there you go that's the same as the other one there you go now I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to pass these there you go that's them um, finished just get you a picture so you can see on the top uh, I'm quite happy with those if you want lining um, then you have to put well you'll have to work out from another pattern how you do the lining uh, I'm quite happy just to have them as wall hangings there you go I think they're absolutely brilliant thank you for joining me